Call us, email us, tweet, or Facebook us to join the conversation. We want to hear from you. Before the break, we asked our studio audience, are people who are offended by controversial comments oversensitive? And here's how they voted. Two thirds said, yes, they are. 29% said, no, just let them be sensitive. And 6% were unsure. Well, we're discussing the ethics of communication today, and now we look at the potential fallout when things don't go well with lawyer Don Hutchinson. Don went to Canada's Supreme Court to intervene for freedom of expression when anti-gay activist William Walcott's flyers were found to be offensive speech. The challenge is that lawyer Don Hutchinson represents a group of churches who want to be known for showing the love of Jesus. How do you navigate free speech? in that context. Don, thank you for being here. Listen, while the court case is getting ready to go, Mr. Walcott is handing out 3,000 of these offensive flyers. I count in the Supreme Court factum 26 groups from civil liberties to journalists to EGAL who want to defend Mr. Walcott's freedom to hand out offensive flyers. Why do Canadian evangelical churches who want to be known for love want to defend that? Well, first, we're not defending Mr. Watcott. We are defending his right to speak. When we intervene before the court, we're presenting legal arguments to encourage the court to make a sound and solid decision. One of the things we were presenting is that evangelicals, as part of our belief, as part of who we are, also have the desire to communicate that publicly and that the Christian voice should not be shuttered away behind the four doors of a church. So the argument then is, how is that part of what should not be shuttered if it's, if it's not helpful to the Christian message? Well, freedom of expression is something that allows all Canadians to speak publicly on issues, to engage in the debate on public policy issues, such as that which Mr. Watcott was doing. Okay, so are Canadian human rights at risk of criminalizing Christian expression? Because that's what he's doing. And that's the big danger, is that we have very clear uh, guidelines and decisions under the Criminal Code of Canada that limit what is or is not hate speech. And then we have human rights commissions and human rights codes that are opening the door to shutting down particular voices. And one of the voices we're very concerned about seeing shut down is the voice of the Christian community on public policy issues. We have a very, very long history in this country of making positive contributions to Canadian law. So what would Jesus say we should be doing about our communication? Would he endorse flyers? Well, the, the flyers that are at dispute. <laughs> uh, the flyers that are in dispute? I think that there is an element of the church that would find that the flyers are appropriate because the flyers actually talk about behavior. They don't go after individuals. They don't go after a community. They talk about behavior, the very same behavior that the Apostle Paul wrote about as being difficult to deal with, not only in the church, but outside of the church. In fact, being unacceptable. So what would Jesus say about the way communication should be done? It's hard for me to put myself into Jesus' shoes on communication. Uh, I, think, I think I'm fairly comfortable that Jesus would allow us each to communicate from the place that we're at. For example, in Mr. Watcott's case, the standard that he's being held to and was being discussed in the Supreme Court of Canada is the same standard that you would hold someone to if they had seven years of post-secondary education and had studied the laws of this nation. Whereas Mr. Watcott was a street kid, was a gay prostitute who converted to Christianity and is now going back into the community that he had come out of and saying there are some things that are problematic and talking to others and saying you might not understand some of the code in the language that's being used in advertising in the news media, but let me reveal that language to you. And really what's offensive is understanding the language. All right. You are a lawyer. Has it always been easy to uh, conform your speech? to what uh, the version of love that Jesus would ask us to give? No. How did you master it? <laughs> I don't know that I have mastered it, Lorna. 
what I do is I try to take a little bit of time to stop, to breathe, to think. There are moments, certainly, when there are things that I would like to say that I swallow back. And I do ask myself the question you asked me earlier. What would Jesus say? What would Jesus do? All right. Don Hutchinson, thank you very much. Now, we want to know what you think. Should we be able to speak freely against a person, practice, or religion without fear of retribution? So, there's the vote. Yes, no, or unsure. Send us your answers by phone, email, Facebook, Twitter, or video message, and we'd love to know what you think, so be part of the conversation. Our studio audience is taking a live vote, and we'll have those results just after the break. Afterwards, my thoughts on communication ethics when we return. <laughs>